Hello and welcome to our third episode of RPG Roundup and today we will be talking about another 40k RPG which in this case will be only war. Okay, so we'll go through Only War, what it is, and give you a recommendation. So, what is Only War? Well, <clears throat> as you can see um, on the lovely front cover... Is this when I zoom? This is... Uh, uh, there we go. Okay. This is the game where you and your party play as the Imperial Guard or the Astra Militarum to use Games Workshop's um, new uh, term for them. So the Imperial Guard in the 40k universe are the, you know, sort of standard humans compared to, you know, bioengineered space marines who hold the line and fight against all of the enemies of the Imperium. Um, so a very different perspective um, to that of a game like Death Watch or Rogue Trader. Um, so it gives you a very different feel. It uses the same system of, you know, the D100 system. However, there have been some changes. Um, I think we might need a we thing going on what's the D100 uh, system for people like myself who forget every single time they so play it. The D100 system means that you would roll, and if we can move the camera. I mean, we could, but I'm not probably not going to yet. You would Where roll two D10s, one which has tens on the dice, and ones and one which has just one to um, zero. Okay, and what you, what happens is you have stats, um, such as in this case you'll have ballistic skill, how good you are with a gun, weapon skill, how good you are with melee weapons, strength, toughness, endurance, you know, all your usual kind of statistics, and they're all on a scale of one to 100. Okay, so it'll be uh, probably for a guardsman, you'll probably start in your kind of 30s to 40s, so not the highest. Um, so what will happen is when you do a roll, so you're trying to shoot someone, so you've got a ballistic skill of 40. Okay, and the person's quite close to you, and you can see them, they're not in cover, they're kind of out in the out in the open. So that makes it an easy shot for you to make, so that gives you a positive um, modifier on the roll. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to roll under our ballistic skill, okay, so we want to roll under 40. In case it's 40, but because it's a you know it's an easy shot, that gives us a plus 20 to the roll, so that means we now want to roll under 60. So I would roll. Oops, I just need some nice dice, I like them. Using my fancy obsidian dice. So I would roll my dice. I rolled a 79. So unfortunately my guardsman shoot uh, misses the shot and and is not able to hit. But that's a very simple um, explanation of the D100 system. So it uses the same system um, overall, but there are some changes in character creation. But before we get to character creation, we first have to talk about regiment creation, pardon me, because in Only War, you do not only play as guardsmen, you also are part of a regiment, because there's thousands, you know, hundred, you know, thousands and thousands of people in the guard, you know, hundred, billions and billions, but they were split into regiments which were made up of thousands, tens of thousands of people. So before, you can either choose a pre-made regiment, which are, you know, sort of um, examples of, you know, from the lore, for example, the Cadians or, you know, the Elysian drop troops, and it gives you regimental rules. So each regiment will be focused on a particular type of warfare, okay? For example, the Elysian drop troops are kind of like, you know, sci-fi paratroopers and um, some may use tanks, some may use um, you know other sort of reconnaissance vehicles and there are rules for all of these different types of regiments, all different types of vehicles in the book obviously there are more source books that have more information um, but oh, that it gives you enough in the core book to get yourself started. Okay so you will pick either one of these regiments which are pre-made or you can make your own regiment, there are rules to do that. It's probably best to start off trying out one from the book. You could try one from the book, yep. So once you and your group you have, have decided on which regiment you're going to be, that will give you bonuses to certain things. For example, you know, if you're a tank regiment, obviously your, your um, group will be a tank crew, you'll have a tank. Some person may be the driver, someone may be the gunner, commander, all that so, uh, But you're all things. cool. And you're all cool. It's uh, worth it. So once you pick your um, regiment, you then move on to actual character creation. 
Okay, so in Openly War, there are two different types of characters that you can uh, create from. Okay, there's the traditional uh, guardsmen, and then there are what are called support specialists. Okay, so your traditional guardsmen are, you know, your rank and file. Uh, you know, different specialisations such as heavy gunners, we can see they are medic, um, you know, uh, tech, tech specialist, weapon specialist, you know, just your... Uh, sorry, operator is called, not tech specialist, um, you know, just sort of bog standard guardsmen. Um, however, there also are, so, also are support specialists who do very particular roles, such as example here, um, stormtroopers who are kind of the equivalent of special forces. Now this does lead to a problem, however, because it does mean if you have a mixed party of guardsmen and support specialists, it can feel a little odd, not only because in terms of role play, the characters are going to be at very kind of different levels. Um, because, for example, you can be a commissar who is in charge of you know um, behavior and punishment for the the full regiment, alongside you know your other players who are playing just regular guardsmen, but also in rules as well. Because there's something called the comrade system in this game. Um, so because guardsmen die very, very quickly in the war, uh, you as a, a guardsman, a normal guardsman, are not alone. You are given a comrade. Okay, it's basically an NPC that you have you know, some limited control over, um, that you can give or specific orders to based on your speciality. So for example, if you're a medic, you can tell your comrade to you know, patch people up while you're healing people and things like that, whereas the support specialists don't get any comrades because they have other abilities. So they're more of a solo, um, you know, kind of kind of play style. So I would suggest one wolf. One wolf. I would suggest if you're going to play this, I would split out the guardsmen and the support specialists. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You could either just have either a campaign of only guardsmen or a campaign of only support specialists or you could have each player create two characters one who would be a guardsman and one who would be a support specialist so you could switch between them at different points in the campaign where it made sense just that way you're getting around those moments where if you do have a commissar and a group of guardsmen you know you don't want that player acting like you know a traditional commissar in war who just starts shooting people for showing cover this it might be fun but you know the other players probably aren't going to be be particularly happy when that happens and um, so that's definitely what I would suggest doing so what do you do once you you know you've picked your regiment you have made your characters well you go to war you know you the for the games master you need to determine where the, the regiment is going who they're fighting and what the objectives are so it's a lot more like death watch in terms of the structure than it is like um yeah. real trader where it's a lot more open uh so I also said it's slightly different in terms of the rules, in terms of character creation and that is because we've moved from a kind of class and rank system, so in uh, Death Watch and Rogue Trader you have a class and it has multiple ranks, almost like levels, based on how much XP you have and you can only buy certain upgrades at certain ranks. So it's a lot simpler in terms of your character uh, leveling, whereas in Only War it switched to what's called aptitudes. So when you pick a class, it's got certain aptitudes, for example, you know, if you're a heavy gunner, you'll have an aptitude for, you know, your ballistic skill, because you'll be good with guns um, and other things like strength. But what that means is when you're buying a skill or you're buying an upgrade, it's going to be a variable amount of XP based on what aptitudes you have. So it means that when your uh, players or you yourself are leveling up in Only War, it tends to take much longer than it does in something like Death Watch because you know, you have to try and figure out, right, okay, what aptitudes do I have? Can I buy this? Can I buy that? How much will it cost me? And personally, uh, some people do like this system of aptitudes, but I don't know, it, it does make it less prohibitive because you can buy, you know, things outside of the wheelhouse, but it just really makes it an extra bit of work. You know, if you're a heavy gunner, why are you not buying gunner skills? You know, really, you want to be good at what you're good at. But it does, it does make things a bit more open-ended, but to me it does also make it complicated. Um, there is a lot of, in the book, a lot of advice in terms of all the various, uh, you know, vehicles, armoury, weapons, things you'll get um, to play with in your game. Uh, it's absolutely great to go through. Um, 
and it's a very fun game. But would I recommend it? Now the problem not to me. The problem with Only War um, compared to the other games is that I think it really depends on your group. And for example, you know, are they the sort of players who are going to get into you know playing as you know the kind of the war end? You know, they're, they may be in the same place for a very long time, just fighting battles over the course of a war. You know, death is rife, your characters can and will die, and there's actually rules for your comrades basically taking a bullet for you um, before it's then you who takes the bullet. But, you know, there is a lot of death, um, and you have to kind of play into that kind of that role playing style is very different. It's not as much of a kind of fantasy, whereas something like Death Watch, you know, you're kind of playing the Space Marines who just go and kill aliens or, you know, you're a rogue trader who's incredibly rich and can go where, they're, go where they want, do what they want, whereas here it's a lot more dictated and a lot more regimented because you are in, you know, a regiment. So it depends on the players, depends on the group. If you are in the mindset where you can be just a grunt um, on the front you and your players, your group will be the same. You will absolutely love this game, you'll make your own regiment, you'll give it its own history, it will build up over the course of the campaign, you know, you'll you'll sob over every comrade who dies, you'll give them a backstory about how they had, you know, a, a, a sweet dame back at home who they wanted to get back to and with their picket fence and their dog and now he's never getting back, you know. Why are you giving a dog a sad story? You have to, it's, it's to add to the tragedy of, you know, endless war. Um, but that's the mindset you have to get into. I mean, you can do it other ways. You can base it off of various different types of war um, kind of media. Things like, you know, um, Band of Brothers, fuck that could not come into my head. And, um, you know, the Pacific, any kind of, you know, war media that you can think of. Damn Busters, you know, take it from that and, you know, you kind of got the idea of what you want to do. Let us from Iwo Jima. Um, you're now just showing off about uh, your terrible, boring tastes in TV. I mean, okay, I'm sure they're better than a lot of what I watch, but... But they are good. But you take that inspiration, but you do have to have a group who are willing to get into that because a lot of Only War can turn into simply just large proportions of, you know, combat. There's there's less opportunity, particularly for role-playing, um, compared to, you know, previous, particularly something like Rogue Trader. Um, but I would recommend it. It wouldn't be a, a kind of hearty recommend to everyone like I would with Death Watch or Rogue Trader. But if you're the sort of person who looks at this cover or looks at the book and thinks, I would absolutely love to run this with my group, it's for you. You know, if you want to live the, the Starship Troopers, the movie, not the book, uh, fantasy of, you know, fighting bugs with guns that barely work, with armor that barely works, well, this is the game for you because that is exactly the scenario you're going to face. As much as I love Starship Troopers, I think it's Rogue Trader for me. What about you? Uh, I'm I'm a fan of this as well, but you know, I think in terms of overall structure, I think Death Watch is just so clean and clear, and this can get a bit kind of muddled and can sometimes kind of be difficult to do. But it is fun. It is fun. It is you know, if you like the guards, you know, you you've played 40k, definitely give this uh, a go. Okay, hope you have fun everyone and have a lovely weekend. We will see you next week. Bye.